there. It's T-Mac from Wild for the Outdoors. And uh, right now, edible plants are pretty popular. Been seeing them all over the place. Uh, around the cabin, we've been talking about them. But no one's mentioned this guy right here. This is the uh, sassafras tree. I tell you what, I love sassafras tea. But I had no idea how prevalent it was out here in this new area that we moved. It grows everywhere. I can see some here, here, more behind me, everywhere. I was uh, doing some work alongside the road the other day, or actually it was yesterday. Uh, They're putting in a new right away on the highway. The landowner hired me to come in there and help him clean out some logs so he can have firewood. And so that's what I've been doing for the last week. And he took that dozer of his, ran into a tree, and I mean, I smelt it. Just sassafras. I mean, that root beer, a lovely, awesome smell. And so <laughs> I started looking around. Where is it at? And I was working with an old timer there. And he, uh, he, I don't know, I didn't, you know, I didn't know how prevalent sassafras was around here. And I've never really looked for it before. And so he kind of took me and said, this is what you're looking for. And the landowner showed me that it really does have a unique leaf. Kind of has a three-toed leaf. What is that? Wow. A vintage plane just flew by. <laughs> Anyway, it has a three-toed leaf, as you can see right here, plus a regular leaf that comes off of it. Kind of two three-toed leaves, two regular leaves. Of course, right here, there's regular leaves. Like I said, they offset each other. So it has two separate kinds of leaves. So they're pretty unique when you see them out in the woods. Uh, kind of hard to miss. Of course, the... Uh, what you're looking for is the roots. I'm not going to harvest these right now. Uh, the old timer says they're best between December and February. The sap's all in the roots. So I'm not going to harvest these. I'm going to let these grow. I want them to get a little bigger anyway. But i got plenty. I mean, all kinds of them right here. I don't have any great big ones, but well, right there, maybe. But anyway, uh, I did harvest some the other day because we were taking the trees out anyway. I... Uh, they were already, I was just able to bend over and pull, just grab the roots right off the ground. So I went ahead and harvested those, and I'm going to process those and make some tea, and I'm going to show you the roots. So kind of show you what to look for. This is what the leaves look like. They're a spindly kind of tree. They don't, they're not real bushy. So it's mostly just one stalk with just, you know, like I said, this is an oak. See how bushy it is? This is a sassafras, just not that bushy, so that's what you're looking for. And the roots, I'll show you the roots. I have some of the roots right here drying out. I've already washed them off, but uh, so here's kind of what the roots look like when you're looking for them. If you, like I said, this was just where they bulldozed. They're making a right away for a new. They're rebuilding the bridge, and so this was just laying on the ground. A lot of them. And you can really see that deep red right there. And the smell. There ain't no mistake in it. It smells like root beer. And uh, this, like I said, this is just laying everywhere. So I got enough here to last forever probably. And most of the old timers say it's better small. You know, these kind of roots make the best tea. But I found a tree there. This is one of the roots off it. I just I reached over and picked it up off the ground and that old timer I was with said, that ain't sassafras. Sure enough it is. <laughs> so uh, the trees get pretty good size. This one, the one I, we found the tree, it was about that big around. And uh, all this root's going to be good and I'm going to process it into making me some sassafras tea. I love that stuff.
I don't know about cancerous carcinogenic sassafras or what, but I sure like a good glass of sassafras tea. And uh, Ben's, I got this right out of the woods. It makes it that much better. Uh, you know, whether you believe it or not, or buy into the hype, or maybe it is bad for you, I don't know. But the guy that I was talking to, who I've been referring to as Old Timer, was up in his 70s, looking into his 80s, and run a chainsaw just as good as I could. And this is the only kind of tea he likes to drink. He doesn't drink it all the time, but regular tea hurts his back, he says. So, if I can uh, get up into my upper 70s, looking into my 80s, and run a chainsaw like that, this stuff's okay with me. more videos go to our YouTube channel Wild for the Outdoors. You can also see them at www.wildfortheoutdoors.com and don't forget to go to Facebook, like us, share us with your friends and hey remember it's your God-given duty to manage this land. 